give us a talk. I'll let him tell you what it's all about. Please help me welcome one of our very first members of this center, Wesley Cron. Now, not all of these ideas are ideal in every situation, 
in every business, but they certainly can be applied in most, and I would think in all. It is essential that leaders practice appreciation and gratitude. It's about really acknowledging what people did, their accomplishments, and what they did to make it happen. Be authentic. Be vulnerably authentic. And inspire others to be authentic. Let your people be themselves. Be present for your people. When you're in a leadership role, I also believe that you should be visible. If somebody wants to ask you a question, I think it's very important to be present. Be observant and awake to what your people are doing so you can praise and acknowledge appropriately and give a heartfelt gratitude. And it's important that when you're in a meeting with people that you express gratitude to the whole group, not to individuals. As soon as you show appreciation to one and not the other, there becomes a divisive, a dividing line. You just don't insist that things turn out in a certain way, but allows the process to unfold on its own. When you're leading from the heart, you know you don't have to intervene. Considering there are Considering your people are working within the compass of what you're trying to achieve. The idea of leading from the heart is really caring about people. In a way that supports their fundamental needs. And we all have need for connection. We all want to belong. And we feel that, and we have a need to grow and to learn and to feel that what we do matters. What we do makes a difference in the world, in the business, and in our lives. These aren't wants, these are needs. And if we ignore these needs, people die, people lay down, people wither, they do not step up. But if you give the people on a consistent basis your authentic gratitude, that's when people thrive. That's when people come alive. That's when people do their best work. And if you can do most of these things with integrity, as a leader in your business, you build trust within the organization. Speaking of trust, I have a small business, and I have uh, Jacques, Jacques Asmel works with me, he does the sound sometimes, he's played music up here, I know a number of you people know him, and I have the privilege of having him work with me every day. And I knew he wasn't going to be here this morning, so I asked him, <laughs> You think that's funny? Uh, so I asked him, is it okay if I talk about our relationship at work? And he said, yes. He didn't ask me what I was going to say or what I was going to mention about us working together. He just trusted that whatever I was going to say was going to be a good thing. Now Jacques has come a long way since he started working with me and there was times when I wasn't sure if he was going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> but he watched, he listened, and he watched and he listened and he persevered. And I watched, and I listened, and I observed what he was doing. And I watched and I listened some more. And then I get guidance. And 
compliments. I acknowledged his growth. I had the patience to watch, to see what he was doing, and to be there when he needed help. I was always there. And I always encouraged to ask questions when he wasn't sure what was going on. And in return, I got their work. That's just the way it works. And he buys me gifts once in a while. <laughs> what a blessing he is. And we've had some differences. We've been together for five years. I mean, we can't expect to be every day a blissful day. We've had some differences, but we know how to deal with them. We deal with them as quickly as possible and with heartfelt apologies when needed. I love you, Jacques, and I love working with you. You make my work day more enjoyable. And I know he can feel that wherever he is. That's what I believe. Jacques and I have a great work relationship, and I attribute a lot of that relationship to what I've been willing to learn from the science of mind right here. Change your thinking and change your life is quite often said in this teaching, and sometimes it might have been said too often. But it's very, very true. Change your thinking, change your life is what happened to me here, and I, I attribute that to the way I am today, the way I learn, the way I teach, the way I live. So here's some quotes from the Tao, the Tao of leadership. When we, learn, when we lead from love, we tap our true power. Love informs our morals, and in any situation, we then draw from the one, and it moves through us, as us, and by us, and out into the world of conditions. Leading from the heart is not about control. It's about trusting in the truth and the right action of the law that flows through us as integrity. Leading from the heart, we do more than know something. We feel into it as well, and we trust the wisdom of the heart. Trust the way you feel about a situation. Trust your intuition. And you can feel when it's right. Just know that. Results flow, follow energy. It is said that money follows love. That is because expression flows from our intentions and ideally, we want our intentions to be rooted in the immutable qualities of God. Love, wholeness, peace, freedom, beauty. We can understand these qualities with our minds, but embodiment comes from knowing these qualities with our whole self. We must integrate our hearts if we are able to be, if we want to be able to be potent leaders, the human the human mind needs the alchemy of the heart to bring forward and redefine divine right action that is in alignment with our morals as leaders. Say it again, please. <laughs> Let your ego go. Yes, we need ego to survive. But in leadership roles, I think ego needs to come down. And let your heart talk through your mind. Mm -hmm. Leading from the heart opens us to a depth of being that allows us to lead in alignment and service to the one. Our spiritual practice helps us to stay focused what is ours to do and what is, our, what is for the greater good of humanity. This allows us to surrender any personal agenda so that our actions are grounded in principles and morals. There's some science of mind quotes. 
in an intelligent study of the teachings of science of mind, we, can, we come to understand that all is love, yet all is love. No, love is all, and all is law. That's the way it is. Love rules through law. Love is the divine givingness. Law is the way. Love is spontaneous. Law is impersonal. We should study the nature of reality with this in mind, and in this way we shall avoid great mistakes, either viewing life as made up of only spontaneous actions, irrespective of law and order. As we gain a broader viewpoint, we shall see that life must contain two fundamental characteristics. <coughs> we, we shall see that there is an infinite spirit operating through an infinite and immutable law. In this, cosmos, and not chaos, finds an internal existence in reality. Love points the way, and law makes the way possible. In the midst of this drama of human existence, Jesus declared that the meek shall inherit the earth. We tell the story of Jesus, Jesus and Buddha to our children. The cross is mightier than the crown, and we teach that love masters everything. The meek shall inherit the earth. To whom have our artists turned to inspire and the quickening power which enables them to depict the ideal? Not the warlords, not even the captains of industry, but to the meek. Here's another quote from the Science of Mind text. It is a beautiful and true thought to realize that every person stands in the shadow of a mighty mind a pure intelligence and a divine givingness. Not alone unto the great comes the soft tread of the unseen guest. The arrogant have not perceived simplicity of faith, but the pure in heart see God. You don't win hearts over by being arrogant and witty. That might be entertaining for a while, but leading by love wins. <laughs> Most people act in order to fill their desires. They believe that the world serves them, but the wiser leader serves others and relatively and is relatively desireless, even defenseless. Most people are plagued by endless needs, but the wise leader is content with relatively little. Most people live very busy lives, one that I can look to. But the wise leader is quiet and reflective. Most people seek stimulation and novelty, but the wise leader prefers what is common and natural. And in closing, you lead where your strengths are in relationships and in your life, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. You're all great leaders, every one of you. And you have choices as to how you're going to lead your life. Put some heart in your life and let love lead the way. And so it is. <laughs>